This is Twit. This is something that's been developing over the last couple of weeks and actually over the last couple of years. And I want to see what my co-hosts have to say about this. Now, you've understood, if you've watched this show, that there's been this trend. More and more companies, more and more tech giants have tried to be transparent. Over the past few years, tech giants have been enticing government entities to their products by giving them access to their source code. It was a show of good faith, one that many in the community, including those here on Twiat, applauded as that movement to transparency. Well, that might be coming to an end. Now, McAfee, which, like Microsoft, had been offering world governments a peek into their code in clean rooms in order to raise confidence that there were no backdoors built into the product, has announced that it's ending the practice. Now, their reasoning is simple. It's a security risk. Though they don't have any hard evidence that such reviews have led to a security issue, there is some risk that such reviews can lead to more advanced cyber attacks on products that are targeted towards government agencies across the world. McAfee, which started offering clean room reviews while it was still part of Intel, is just the latest company that has made this move, with Symantec doing the same about 18 months ago, and smaller vendors quietly discontinuing the practice. Although all are very careful to couch the announcement as a natural evolution of business practices, sources close to the matter seem to indicate that the main problem resided in a set of clean rooms in Russia. Perhaps the era of transparency in proprietary software has once again entered a cold war. Cheever, let me throw this to you first. Let's, let's get some history here. Why the clean rooms in the first place? We had Microsoft, we had Apple, we had Facebook, all the security companies saying, we want you as a client and to assure you that there are no backdoors that our government would use, we're going to let you have a peek at the source code. Why did this become popular and why did it spread so quickly to the tech community? It was marketing. You know, that's the long and short of it. They wanted large government um, contracts. They wanted them to trust their product and it was marketing. Now, ask any developer, oh yeah, we're going to have an independent third party party come and review your code to see if you put any back doors in. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to like that just as much as a visit to a proctologist. So, no, it, it had to end someday. I wish... It could continue because I love transparency, um, but I can't fault them for this. I really can't. Right. You know, more eyes on the internals of your product means more talent potentially learning how to circumvent your protection. Yeah. So I, I see both sides. You know, I like the transparency. I would love to see it continue, but I'm also a realist. Now, Lou, you work for one of the companies that has been using clean rooms and is currently still using clean rooms, although that policy could change at, at any time. You've heard what Cheever just said, and I'm, I'm kind of on the same page. This was a PR thing. Uh, I, I never expected a whole lot of technical details to leak out through a look at code in these clean rooms because, I mean, it's not as if they could take the code home. They had to go to particular facilities that were isolated from the outside world. You could bring in one or two engineers, and they could scan the relevant sections to make sure that there wasn't any code there that might allow for a back door. So in that sense, it really seemed like, okay, it's transparency, but it's it's controlled transparency. It's transparency just enough to make you feel the warm and fuzzy. Does it make sense, as Chibert said, that this is coming to an end? If it was a PR stunt, the PR is now spent and there's no more use for this. You know, I haven't heard anything from, from the Microsoft side, but I, I do know that there are a lot of organizations out there that, you know, because, you know, the, the ecosystems kind of require it. So when you, you know, no matter if you're, if you're hosting a, an application or if you're putting it in a store, they still have to be able to scan your, not just your binaries, but your source code uh, regardless. And so I think the, these particular ecosystems are a forcing function to, to allow, you know, people to do that. Now, when you have actual platform developers and operating system developers like Apple and Microsoft and Google, you know, again, having people peek into the technology is is not as valuable as it was anymore. One, because of the complexity of the technology. I mean, peeking into a small portion of the code base is not going to be a, a telling function for how safe or secure it is anymore uh, without knowing kind of the the surrounding subsystems and so on. So, you know, you know, again, I, I kind of agree. It's it's it's, you know, personally, I think it might have been more of a PR thing than anything to f make it feel safe. But unless you have engineers, you know, clean rooms used to be that they were just these 
you know, reverse engineering laboratories where people used to go in them and and reverse engineer things, um, you know, without the help of the manufacturer or developer. Um, and, you know, and they've kind of morphed themselves into a an agreement that we open the door to a little portion of of the code. But again, how useful is it? I don't think I mean, as a developer, I don't look looking at a small portion is very useful anymore. So but yeah. again, it, that's only for platform developers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chibert, uh, we've got JJ to the 484 who's voicing what I think will be a question among a lot of the people listening or watching this right now. And that is, well, if you're so worried about this, why not just use open source? A and I am a proponent of open source. I use several different open source suites and packages in my lab and in my infrastructure. But this is, I mean, we have to address this. Why not? Why not just switch to all Linux and all open office and all open source tools across the enterprise? And I answer back with, why not? There's actually quite a few people that have done exactly that. Um, but as much as I love open source and I support open source, heck, I, I run one of the larger Linux mirror sites on Earth. Um, I do have one problem with op a lot of open source products in that there's so many personalities involved that what you end up with is, oh, it works on this distro, but not that distro, or I've got this dependency or that dependency, or this, you know, there's, I, I, what I end up with is a product that I shift my costs into support. Um, just from a pure support standpoint, having, um, open source does cost more because, you know, more of the support is on me. Uh, I can't call someone up and say, hey, it's broke. Fix it. So, yeah, there's a lot of good things. You know, JJ does point out, yeah, there's snap packages work. You know, and I got to admit, our friends at Splunk have done a spectacular job. It's one of the few pack commercial packages that is based on open source that will install without making me go and dig for dependencies, you know, all day long. Um, and the clean, easy install, the easier um, support. That's what people like for commercial. So, yeah, on one hand, yeah, I can do, I can have a team go and do a review on open source and make sure there's no back doors. But like Lou said, software is getting really complicated. There's an awful lot of pieces. You know, how much review are you willing to do? And you know what? We're going to, our guest today is actually going to be talking a little bit along that line and that you know we need to do more testing within our organizations and um i've gone completely off the rails and <laughs> not answer your question but you know yeah there's a lot there's a lot of good things about open source but trust wise a lot of commercial entities want to have the microsoft or the google or someone to be able to call up and say it's broke come fix it right right and, and i mean that was that was what made the clean rooms and the transparency programs from, from various companies attractive in that they were giving something that was akin to open source in the sense that I can actually look at the code. But like Lou said, I mean, there's only so much you can glean from looking at a couple of sections. But at the same time, it gives me what, what the administrative side of me wants, and that is I have someone to blame. Let's, let's not even call it support. It's blame. If, if the software breaks and it's open source and my department was responsible for upkeeping it, it is my fault. There is no one else to turn to. If a server from Oracle or from Microsoft breaks, then I have someone I'm going to call at Microsoft or Oracle, and we, we're going to have words, and they're going to send over support, and they're going to fix it right away. Now, whether or not that is the technologically superior way to do it, it was the business superior way to handle things. Lou, let's look at this at its ultimate conclusion. So... Companies are going to start shutting down clean rooms because it's not getting them anything anymore. Uh, you know, no one's trusting anybody else. All the closed source is going to get even mo more closed source. All the future developments are just going to be, well, trust us, it's working now. How do you see this playing out? Is it, is, are we going to now further the, the divide between open source and closed source? Because for many years here uh, on this show, we've seen it get closer and closer and closer. Uh, and now it seems like, okay, we're going to reverse that trend. You know, I think the push is more like I think we, we come out at the angle of open source, like, you know, a company that I work at, you know, we're, we're focusing a lot of time and energy on open source, not only, you know, 
com- uh, producing open source code and 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 platforms, but also you know consuming them. And so you know, and the reason is, is is exactly that. I mean, it gives us this ability for us to you know to 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 take in you know. Uh, use code and proven code that perform a set of functions that we require or need it to do and then be able to scan it and make sure it's secure and and if it, it performs what we need and so on and so forth and and so that that's a reason why we're moving forward with it i mean it you know even no matter how many people come in and change it um you know we always have this ability to see what was changed and ensure it's just safe and secure. You know, from the other perspective, as you, there's going to be always some operating systems and platforms. You know, like for instance, I don't ever see iOS becoming open source. So, um, you know, these types of things um, are going to have to be closed source scenarios. And and you know, is it still valuable to do clean rooms? I, I don't see them doing that. And I think that. Uh, will it force a divide in open source? I don't think so. I think open source has a different value, uh, and there will be more and more of it going forward as people want to be more and more productive when they develop software. So I don't, I don't think it's a forcing function. 